Congressman Mike Waltz of Florida. Uh, it's a bipartisan task force to investigate the attempted assassination of former President Trump. First, just your thoughts on what we have heard so far in the Senate. I know you've been monitoring it. Well, Donna, you know, first and foremost, let me just say the tone is completely different. And I want to give kudos to the acting director of the Secret Service and the deputy director of the FBI. Then we had from the now former Secret Service director, Cheadle, who uh, was obtuse, frankly, was smug and uh, really just sat behind an ongoing investigation. So I think being more forthcoming being more transparent. The deputy director saying usually we don't give details of ongoing investigations. However, given the historic, unprecedented, nearly catastrophic nature of this assassination attempt, uh, we're gonna level as much as we can with the American people. So that's one. Uh, number two, we didn't get to the bottom of what I think is the core issue yet and why I commend Speaker Johnson for setting up a bipartisan task force. Was Senator President Trump denied resources? Was his core detail, which obviously he is not your average former president like a Jimmy Carter or a W. Bush, uh, repeatedly requested and denied resources? The agents told me the day after the attempt that they were. Uh, Mayorkas immediately, publicly, on CNN, uh, said that's irresponsible and false. And since then, as did the Secret Service uh, uh, spokesperson, I confirmed Director Cheadle approved that denial, and they've since walked that back. Today, what we heard is there will be no further denials going forward, but did we have some and why? Uh, those are some of the things uh, that really jumped out at me. Yeah, and then uh, just in the last few minutes, Senator Ted Cruz uh, said without any evidence that the reason that the Secret Service leadership did not approve uh, that extra uh, help for the former president, the candidate for president, Donald Trump, was political. Do you have any evidence to back that up? Because the acting director said flat out that it's not because of politics, that there is a, yes, well, there what is, that there is a difference between somebody who um, has to be ready to launch a nuclear strike, God forbid, meaning a current president and a former president. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's, I didn't see that portion with Senator Cruz. That's not mm -hmm. the distinction I'm making. Of course, mm -hmm. the acting president has a larger detail, but what the agents are telling me, and I want to emphasize that, is that President Trump was given the same size detail for a former president that all other former presidents are given, that there were not additional considerations for the foreign threats, for the additional domestic threats. And the biggest piece was the number of rallies that he's doing. And at least what these agents are telling me is kind of the tone from headquarters was we're not going to burn through our budget for all of these extra agents and all of this extra overtime and travel because the former president wants to have a lot of rallies. And I think that this is an obvious key point. He's also a candidate, and he's right. been a candidate a lot longer than that. We haven't had a former president as candidate since the 1800s, and I'm not sure we'll get to the bottom of it that that was appropriately accounted for, and it almost cost him his life. And, you know, the other thing that has been stunning to hear from uh, the acting Secret Service director is the complete disconnect between local law enforcement, who they were relying on for whatever reason, maybe it is because of the fact that they didn't have the personnel there, um, total disconnect between them and the Secret Service, lack of communication, real-time communication, which led right. to the Secret Service not knowing that local law enforcement was aware of this shooter, got onto the roof and there was just it wasn't communicated to the Secret Service in time to get the former president away, to stop the rally in the first place, right. whatever it was that they could do to prevent this. Well, it's completely unacceptable. I'm glad the acting director explicitly stated that. I will say, having done multinational and, and uh, multi-agency operations myself, anytime you get multiple agencies involved, you're going to have a more difficult time, you know, um, time in terms of coordinating. But it does go back to the resources issue. Of course, 
His core detail would have preferred additional Secret Service agents. One of the things we need to get to the bottom of is were they requested for that building, for the AGR building? Were they denied uh, in the advance? Uh, and again, one of the things that came out with Director Cheadle in the House testimony is from the local field office, 12 agents went to Dr. Jill Biden's event in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and only three were assigned to the rally. So again, is there some formula or are they sending resources according to the threat, the size of the crowd uh, and, and, and those things? And, you know, and why were those why was that disparate amount of resources yeah. sent to one and not the other? is I something heard, else we need to get to the bottom of. I haven't heard in this uh, particular hearing, but my colleagues have asked the Secret Service if any resources were diverted from Trump uh, to uh, to Jill Biden, and uh, the answer but was But it did come out in Director Cheadle's testimony. It did come out in Director Cheadle's testimony just last week. Twelve were sent to Dr. Jill. Only three were sent to President uh, Trump's rally. Why? And was that reflective of the threat? Okay. Well, we'll definitely try to get to the bottom of that. Um, what other questions do you, before I let you go and get back to this hearing, what other questions do you uh, think are crucial uh, to get from not just the acting uh, Secret Service director, but the FBI, uh, who, of course, are in charge of this investigation? Like the attempted... Well, I think we need to confirm, uh, number one, that he indeed acted alone or did he have some type of help. You do have overlaid the, with this Iran uh, sending operatives across our southern border. The FBI has sent out bulletins to that effect that they routed through Venezuela and are actively recruiting assassins not only for former President Trump, but members of his cabinet involved in the Soleimani strike. So we absolutely need to confirm that. And he, he did have overseas accounts that we haven't gotten to the bottom of. And then I think you have broader issues, uh, Donna, in terms of the Secret Service's budget, which has doubled uh, over time. You know, do they have what they need to protect 36 uh, uh, individuals coupled with a very heightened threat environment? And we don't have months to figure this out. We need to figure it out right now because we're obviously in the middle of a very contentious campaign uh, with with uh, a, just a, a lot of threats and a wide open border. Uh, well, we certainly do have a, a very intense and a very short window, and we, everybody hopes that they do uh, figure this out very soon. You came on also to talk about the 2024 race, that race you were just talking about. You are a close ally mm. of the former president. Please come back, and we'll get to that on a day where we're not having this uh, breaking news in this hearing. Will do. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you.